right. It's been like 15 minutes. I know I should be. So I'm just gonna kind of do a little walkthrough. I might just build a little video here on how I rebuild a bow from start to finish. Um, this customer brought this bow in. This is a Hoyt Ventum 33. Got stock strings on it. Wanted a new set of strings and cables on it. So I built some here the other day, 452X. We did two color twist. We did a sand and a black twist with black serving. So um, one thing I always do is I always check the poundage what it come in from the customer and I ask them what they want it set at. Do they want it set at what it is currently or if it's maxed out, you know, if it's a 70 pound bow is 70, 71, okay. But generally I always ask them, that's the number one priority for me. And then number two, I take a peep sight measurement from your knocking point. That way when you come to pick it up, it is basically in the exact same spot as it was when it came in. So right now I got my measurements and I'm gonna go through and I'm going to start taking this bow apart. First thing I always do is I usually take the string off. And if you hear the background noise, I've got the TV running and the dogs running around here too. So uh, I always take the string off. And then what I do, <clears throat> I just work one cable at a time. This has got a QAD integrate Hoyt arrow rest on it so we gotta it's got the little football on here so I'm gonna take that off and generally I serve them serve the drop away cable into the cable but uh, in this case sometimes the the drop away timing cord is a little too short because of the serving that'll go on the roller guard so it's kind of just depending on the circumstances at that time so um, Got the string off. I'm always gonna work from the outside in. So I'm gonna take this first cable here. And I generally save the strings, regardless of what shape they're in, unless there's like cut servings or cut string fibers. I usually like to give them back to the customer because if you go out on an out-of-state hunt, if you have an accident, um, I do a lot of hunting in November and you probably don't wanna be calling me in November because I'm probably hunting. But I generally will make time to get you taken care of, but. Um, if you have your old set of strings, we can swap them on there. Or if you're, again, out of state, you can do that as well. And get back up to hunting in a minimal time. So, uh, again, start with one cable at a time. Don't take any twists out of these strings. And I just run them back into the track. One there. This one's going to go back over here. One, I'm gonna take the other one off. And this is kind of a monotonous process. This start to finish on a good bow build um, takes anywhere from 45 minutes to a good hour, but I'm gonna obviously fast forward through a lot of boring stuff and get you the high points. There's a lot of things that I go through and check that probably not gonna show on the video, but it's not a secret either. If guys want to ask, I'll, I'll answer their questions. But I do a lot of bow builds every year. Um, I probably do three to 350 bow builds a year for customers. So guys that come in the shop that don't know that we actually build strings, you know, ask, are our strings any good? Well, if I consistently do that many every year, um, Yes, they are good. Uh, we, we're not a huge builder. We tried that game. We had a lot of dealers years ago, but just time consuming. Um, so I've really just focused on the pro shop side of it and just working on working with you, the customer more than trying to fill a dealer base because I mean, there's money in it, but it's not where my passion is. I'd rather get a text message from you in September or October or even November, some Sunday morning after you shot your deer and I'm laying in bed because I'm not out hunting. I mean, I love getting those text messages. So that's generally what my fall uh, turns into. 
once it slows down. But uh, got both cables on, got them tracked correctly. Working on the string right now. All my strings are pre-stretched. Peep rotation is gonna be very, very, very minimal. Um, shot time for settling these in. I just say the first 50 shots is gonna be sitting pretty good. And then, you know, it maybe takes, uh, let's just say another 500 shots and we'll, we'll fine tune them. But other than that, they really shouldn't move at all. So, there's a lot of little things, you know, just making sure stuff is put in the right spot. So, just working it up. I got everything rerouted. Now I'm going to take tension off the strings. There it is. That's the first major part of putting on a bowstring, taking the old ones off. But the thing that I work on is get the strings installed. I'm going to put a D loop on here, but with doing that, I usually like to level out the bow first. So put it in a vise, and we're just gonna level this sucker out. Get the bow level, forward to backwards, and then left to right. And that does two things for me. One, I can get the initial knock height for the, for the D loop and stuff set correctly to run through your burger hole on your bow. And what it also does is it tells me how level your sight is just right off the bat. Like, this one right now is off quite a bit, so I'll actually take this sight off and I'll level out the first, second, third axis. Get it really close. Um, generally, the customer is supposed to level that at full draw, but I've been able to get them really close on my personal bows and I haven't had any issues with it, so it's kind of the practice that I run. Um, but bow is all level right now, so then we'll grab a little D-loop material here. We're gonna run with tan. Customer provided an arrow that he was shooting with, so this is a serious arrow. Um, got a little point weight in the front here, so we will actually go through and tune this bow to this arrow throughout the whole setup here. So. This knock fits maybe just a hair tighter than what I'd like, but I'd rather, instead of tearing it off and putting a new one on there, because I actually don't have a smaller center serving, um, we'll just run with what we've got. It's not too terribly tight. It moves pretty easily, but you don't want that center serving to like snap on there super hard. You want it to snap on, but free float. Get this D-loop flared up here a little bit and then just start getting the arrow process going here. I always start on the top. Get the first one going. I pull out the arrow level, check that. Right now I'm a little bit knock low, push that up. I usually like to run on the Hoyts, always run the middle of the arrow through the middle of the burger hole. On some bows like the Elites, the older Elites, I always like to run the bottom of the arrow through the middle of the burger hole. It just kind of depends on the characteristics, but this would be in a binary cam system. I have found when I'm setting them up and tuning them, this works pretty well. So I'll run the knock slightly maybe like a 16th knock high. But generally, it's run well. Tighten up the top knot, and then I grab some third serving thread.
next thing I'm going to do is I always put a soft knot built into the built into this bow setup. Something that I found that works really well. Um, some guys will run a knot above and below the knock. I always like to run it below because that way when you come to full draw, generally tension pushing down on the on the knock, and that'll raise your knot your your arrow up off the rest. So it, you're, you're pinching that knock. What I like to do is run it underneath, so that way it keeps it in contact with the arrow rest, so that way it full, comes a full draw. Even if you do have that knock pinch, when you release that arrow, it's still being guided by the uh, arrow rest. In a perfect world, you shouldn't have to worry about it. I leave just a little bit of a gap going up and down, like maybe a 30 seconds of an inch, uh, but it, I build a little cushion into my setups. And this is how I set my own bows up. I just do a couple underhand knots. Um, some guys may do this differently than me, but this is what this is the practice that I have run, and it works well for me. I'll do about four little knots going underneath of it, and then I'll maybe do one or two over the very bottom two knots that I did just to kind of build that tension. I'm building it like a step. So it'll go one, two, three, four, and then five and six for knots. And it don't take very much. But these are those little things that I have found over the years that work well for my bow setups and this translates from a hunting setup to a target setup when I'm setting up a bow. Just burn it off. Stick the knock back in there. And then we're gonna tie the bottom side of the D-loop. And one of the biggest pet peeves that I have is local shops that are working on bows, techs that aren't as experienced, um, they're putting both of their knots on the same side of the string. And what that's doing is it's pulling on one side. And the only way I'll do that is if I have really bad peep rotation on a, on a stock string. But with a custom string, you know, you want that knot to pull on either side of the string and keep that tension even. Otherwise, if you put all the tension on, say, the left side of the string or the right side of the string, when you pull back, it's naturally gonna wanna pull that string one way or the other. It's not a big difference, but it does add up. Not necessarily the right way, it does work. It's just a pet peeve of mine. So. burned and mushroomed. Now just pull it snug a little bit. D loop is set. Now grab a tape measure, measure center shot. 13 16 is generally where you want to be measuring from the inside of the riser. Right now this bow came in at three quarters of an inch. It might tune there really well, um, but I'm gonna set it to where I think it needs to be and then I'll move it from there. So I gotta move it one eighth of an inch to the left. Down key. And you can tune your arrows on your bows a couple different ways. Um, set your 13 16 center shot. You can then, you know, shim cams left or right if it's a real bad tear, or you can basically run them by just moving the arrow rest to compensate a little bit. I don't know which way is the best. I usually try and run all my center shots 13 16 and then adjust the bow from there whether I got to shim the cam or not. So I'm at 13 16 there, I'm going to tighten this back up. The bow is level, I'm going to check the timing and check the poundage where it's max and then I'm going to back this down to 67 pounds because that's where it came in at. Came in at. The, the overall draw weight of the bow, I'm not concerned about the draw 
or the, I'm not concerned necessarily about the timing right now because I will adjust that, but um, always have an arrow on the bow, handheld release or handheld scale, draw it back, hold it for a sec, let down. This bow came in at 72 pounds. That's maxed out with a new set of cuff strings, so that's right in spec. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna check the timing on the bow. I got a hook on the ceiling. It's a little bit quicker than a draw board. And right now I'm just holding the bow down. Some guys might not like this, but this is the way I do it. So right now my bottom cam is hitting about a 16th before the top cam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna press this bow and I'm gonna take, or I'm gonna add a half a twist to the bottom cable in order for that cam to rotate this way so it's getting you're just manipulating the timing of the cam so press it look at your twist add a half a twist hook it back on and then just check the timing and this is right out of the box i mean i haven't done anything with it generally i try to strive for a set of strings to be very very minimal timing issues when they're actually on the bow the more pieces you have obviously the more uh, you might have to adjust but generally the set of strings and cables for me you can put them on and maybe add a twist or two and you should be good i'm going to check the timing one more time and i'm pulling down on it where the air the knock would be because that's what i'm trying to gauge it off of so i've got perfect timing on everything right now so we're good to go there the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to press this and we're going to try and get the timing set for the for the uh the drop away but actually we have to back this off customer wanted this at 67 pounds so let's back this off a turn and a half that's about how much i added when it came in let's just try one full turn first even top even bottom one again an arrow is super critical right now never pull a bow back without an arrow on it Sixty-eight and a half. We'll go another half turn. Sixty-eight point two. Back off another half turn. Whatever you do to the top limb, you always do to the bottom. Once we get our poundage set, then we will uh, check the timing one last time. 67 pounds right there. Okay, check the timing one more time. Just to make sure that we got all the twists on the cables. And the limb bolt set where it's supposed to be. And we are set perfect. Now, press this and put the drop away timing cord into your downward bus cable. So this one's a little short, so we'll use that football again. Kind of a crude video, but never really done one of these, so we're gonna do it. And I got nothing else to do this afternoon, so. Split the football. That in there. And what I like to do is flare up the back side of that cable string just in case it or for some odd reason slip through that football got snagged on something but okay so that's there 
We're gonna go like probably there. It's just kind of a guess at first. And, that's, and this process is kind of the part why we get paid the money that we do. Sometimes they go good, sometimes they go better. But it's a lot of drawboard, bull press, just getting this timing set correctly. So. And all I'm doing is drawing the bow back. I add a little tension on that football so that it will slide just a little bit when it does come to full draw. <clears throat> and where it stops naturally is where I'll put it. And then I let it down, I just move it like a 30 seconds of an inch just to give it a little tension, but I don't want it to be so much that it actually pulls that cam out of timing. And right now, I'll put this back in the press. All I'm doing is just holding the bow with the bow press. And that football, let's go through and tighten this guy up. Again, my, my preferred way of doing this is splitting the cable, tying a knot in the bottom side of the timing cord, and then serving it in. But since the timing cord came at this length and the serving is running so much longer, the football does work. There's nothing wrong with it. I've used both methods, but if I had a choice, I'll, I'll definitely serve it in before I um, use the football. But in this case, we're going with the football. So this is timed. Um, now I can shoot the bow. All I do is generally just shoot it a little bit just to test everything. And at this process, I generally try to run like 50 shots through each bow before it leaves the shop. Um, and that process is generally done this is kind of the process that you'll see the majority of those shots going through. And I haven't even put a peep sight in yet, but I definitely want to try and get this string just to, things will settle a little bit. Things got to, the servings are tight. They got to get conformed to the, the string tracks. Um, I'll shoot five, six, seven, eight arrows, whatever it takes. Well, I feel that's good. And then we'll stick a peep sight in. And then we'll go through and shoot it again, tie it in, and go out and paper tune it. Sometimes these arrows with the collars, they don't like bag guards. So, anyways, so I feel we're pretty good there. I am going to press this, take my measurement, and uh, just get some preliminary measurement. Okay, so kind of got my string separator here put together peep sight from the top of the knock to the bottom of the peep sight was five and three quarter. So I measure that up, stick that in there, I'm gonna press this bow. Actually, I gotta get the old peep sight off first. Old peep is here, cut that off. And I generally will use the same peep unless customer specifies he wants something different. My choice of peep here at the shop is either a uh, Hamsky um, Raptor peep, which is tunneled, got some baffles in there to really help with getting your alignment perfect. Or generally it's a radical peep from Radical Archery Products. Um, they're just solid. They don't ever have any sharp corners. Um, some other good peep sites or peep site companies out there like G5, the Meta Peep, um, Hot Shot Archery makes one. Um, there's just a handful out there. Some are good, some are bad. It's just kind of whatever you prefer. But this peep site is, I 
believe, a meta peep. No, this is a radical peep. They make an anodized version called the P38. It's anodized aluminum. I believe that's what this one is. But either way, we're gonna split the string, stick it in there, and then I generally put the tension back onto the boat so it doesn't fall out, but then I'll measure it. Okay, so we're at five and three quarter. And I'll just take the tension off and see where the peep naturally wants to sit. So right now it's actually backwards and it's facing away from the shooter. So what I'll do is I will actually press this bow again, take the peep sight, and just flip it over 180 degrees, take the tension off of it. Take the string separator out of there, remeasure it. So there we're at. That's it. Take the tension off. It's sitting off to the right just a little bit. But that can be fixed by tying it in the right way. Next thing I do, a visual for me, is mark it with a sharpie. Silver sharpie, black sharpie, whatever one's easier to see. And I just mark it on the inside of the groove of the peak. So that way when I'm shooting it, I can watch it. If I need to adjust it, we can do that too. Now I'm gonna tie this peep sight in. When I tie it in, I don't put any extra tension on it. I just go up right up to where the, right where the strings come back together and that's where I tie and I put my knots there. That way I'm not adding any tension. If you go below, so there's a gap where you're getting in the triangle, you start pulling those together, you're gonna to start adding rotation to that peep. I'm simply using this method as a way to slim, simply train the peep. You know, if you come back full draw and it's maybe off a 16th of an inch, it's too much to fix with uh, half a turn. You can just push down on one of the servings and it'll be just enough to rotate that peep back into alignment for you. Um, it's just a little, little trick that I've learned over the years. And, Works for me, and then when I get it all set, then I'll actually tie around the peep so it won't go anywhere. But I'll run a bunch of half hitch knots. They won't really go anywhere, but if you have like an old shoelace or something, you can move these knots pretty easy. And this is just that little tedious work that we, uh, that we do here at the Archer Shop. Make, make all the little details look good and the final product is even better then. Cut that off, do the top one, and I'll move down to the bottom one. Do probably two dozen half hitch knots and looks clean. Some guys will actually serve it, back serve it. The thing I don't like about back serving my peep sights is if I want to move it, it's very hard to do. Go through and burn your tags. Then I'm gonna shoot it and just make sure that the peep sight comes back straight and then adjust from it. Isn't the best way of showing you, but shot it three times, peep has not moved. Um, 
But essentially, you what you want is coming from brace height to full draw that peak to line up square to your eye. Now, sometimes it might sit off to the right or the left just a little bit, but that's to me that's normal, depending on where you put the string or the peak sight in the string track. It's right there. I'm perfectly square. Shoot it. Still in the same spot. So peep sight's nice and square, D loop straight. Sometimes I, you gotta offset the D loop by maybe just like a sixteenth or something. But um, to me, this string is gonna be good. It maybe add a half a twist to it after a, the first thousand shots, but I don't think it's gonna move. It's gonna stay where it's at. The tune is never gonna move on this bow. Shouldn't say never. You know, the the life of the string is probably two years, depending on how much you shoot, but. Um, this bow is pretty much set up and dialed in, and this is kind of how I do my bows. I'm gonna tie this peep sight in, and then I'm gonna go out to the paper to the paper tuner, shoot it through paper, and see. Right now, I'm just tying this peep sight back in, so it won't move. And then we're gonna run out to the range and run it through some paper and see what we're getting. I'm thinking we're gonna get a a stiff tear on paper with this arrow. Uh, I might be wrong. Generally, when you take an arrow and you add a lot of weight to it, you're gonna really work with your paper tune in order to get that thing to tune perfect, but we'll get it as close as we can, and if we have to, we'll work with the customer. First shot, let's we'll see where it does. Not bad for a super heavy arrow with that point making the front. Just a little bit of a wobble in the paper, so. So I, so I pulled that arrow out. And this is the tear. It's not terrible. Let's see where that hole is right there. It's not terrible. Uh, nice clean cuts. The paper is moving a little bit from the air conditioner that's moving, so. For me, getting bows set out the door for customers, I am I'm happy with that. It's a really good starting point. Um, I know for me, the arrow's coming out of the bow straight. Customer comes, we'll have them shoot through paper if they want. And then if we'll go through the walk back tuning process. I usually let them do that on their own, but I'll, I'll explain the process. And that's generally what I do next on my bows is go outside, start doing a walk back, shooting at lines. Um, but for the most part, that is a bow build in itself, aside from actually building the strings and uh, really digging into the nitty gritty of it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, it's always fun kind of sharing information with people. I don't usually get a lot of time to do it, but today I just figured I'm gonna just hit the record button and go for it, so.